Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning everyone as we uh, come to celebrate Pentecost Sunday today. Let us pray. O God, you sent the Holy Spirit to enkindle the zeal of Christ's followers waiting in Jerusalem for his promised gift. Pour that same inspiration on your people who are listening in to this message today and on the Church of Christ throughout the world. Revive the power of the gospel in our hearts that it may be to us a sacred trust for the blessing of all creation. Enable your church to spread the good news of salvation so that all nations may hear it in their own tongues and welcome it in their own lives. Father, protect, encourage, and bless all ministers of the cross and prosper their words and works so that Jesus, being lifted up, may draw all people unto him and the kingdoms of the world may become the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. If you would, this morning, actually, I guess we'll do a couple of quick messages. We are still planning on assembling live on June the 14th. We will confirm that for sure next week. We're in the process of uh, getting the necessary safety supplies. We've already got some masks in if anyone wants to use them. Uh, we've got hand sanitizer coming and, and a few other things. I'll be sending out a letter to everyone that's a member to talk about the, the changes that we'll have to enact for the first few weeks until the coronavirus situation and the emergency has passed us by. So I do look forward to seeing everyone in two weeks, uh, subject to recommendations from the health officials, but that's what we're aiming for, is to gather in service at both here at Pentecost and at Vaucluse on June the 14th. If you would now please join in with me in reciting our Christian faith, what we believe in, the words of the Apostles' Creed, number 881 in our hymns. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As I stand here this morning, not only have we had to deal with the coronavirus issues, but the news throughout our country has not been good over the last two or three days. We have police brutality. We have rioting and looters in the streets. So, as we prepare for today's message, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you as we come here to celebrate the founding of the church. Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have poured out upon us. We thank you for allowing us to be born, lived, and raised in a great country. A country that you've blessed with abandoned, abundant wealth and resources. Father, we thank you for all of these blessings and we come before you humbly this morning still in lockdown or partial lockdown depending on where we are from the coronavirus father we pray for those families that have lost loved ones to this virus who are currently sick who are not able to work who are having to stay home to take care of their sick family members 
for those whose financial situation is under great distress right now. Father, we ask that you be with them and give them the peace and comfort that comes from right relationship with you. Father, we lift up those frontline workers, the, the first responders, the ambulances, the doctors, the nurses, the surgeons, the hospital workers, all of those who have put their lives on the line for our safety in fighting this virus. And Father, this morning we're also reminded of others who put their lives on the line. Our policemen, our firemen, our National Guard, those who work for the utility companies and come out into hurricanes to deal with restoring electricity. Those who serve with their gifts and talents in, in whatever manners they have. Father, we pray many times for a great spiritual revival to come for this country. We realize the division and we realize that while I was hoping that we were drawing closer together, the events of the recent days show that we are still as deeply divided as always. Father, help heal this country. Help heal our hearts and souls so that we do not repay evil with evil, but repay it with love. Father, lead us and guide us down the path that you would have us to follow. Help us to know your will. Father, most of all, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus, who came and who lived among us, who sacrificed himself for us so that we would have the opportunity to live forever with you. Father, in honor and memory of Jesus and the manner in which he taught his disciples to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. A little warm in here this morning, so forgive me in the towel. Summer is slowly drawing upon us. This June is almost here. I'll be reading today from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. I'm reading from the NRSV translation today. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one had heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who were speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews, 
and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show you wonders in heavens above and signs on earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. I call today's message a birthday party. And today's scripture is, the reading we had today is so theologically rich, it's just extraordinarily rich. We could have a, we could have a Bible study on today's sermon that would last for many, many weeks. And we may actually choose to do that when we come back together, but... Today we're going to take a, a high level look at this scripture passage and we're going to try to apply it to our mission in the world today. I really, really miss being here in person with you guys. And, you know, if I had it planned out for the children's sermon today, I was going to bring a birthday cake. Okay, maybe cupcakes would be a better idea. But I was going to bring it in and as I, I was going to explain to our young ones that we're celebrating a very special birthday today. We're celebrating the birthday of the Christian church. And while I think about it, one of our young ones just had a birthday. and look forward to seeing you soon. We call that birthday of the church the Pentecost. And in a lot of ways... I've always thought of the church as actually beginning with the proclamation in Luke chapter 1 to Mary from the angel when he said, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Now I've always kind of considered that the beginning of a church. But we actually celebrate the birth of the church as written in the opening line of today's scripture passage. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Now remember, Jesus had recently told his disciples, Luke 24, I'm going to send you where my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. He also told them, for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's from Acts chapter 1. The gift of the Holy Spirit that's given in today's scripture passage fulfills the prophecy of John the Baptist. If you'll recall, he said in Luke chapter 3, I baptize you with water. But one comes who is more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. This is the same Holy Spirit responsible for the birth of Jesus. The same Holy Spirit that descended upon Jesus at his baptism. The same Holy Spirit that on this day is filling his disciples. And it's the same Holy Spirit that lives within us today. If you recall, Jesus began his ministry after he was spirit-filled and went to face his temptations. Now the apostles 
begin their ministry, the ministry of the church, after having been filled with the Spirit. The scripture reads, Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And one of the reasons that this day of Pentecost is so special is because prior to this day, God had only sent his spirit to a chosen few people throughout history. So now a new era begins on this day of Pentecost. God now freely gives his spirit to all who belong to the believing community. Think about that. It's rare for anyone, it was rare for anyone in the days of the Old Testament to have the Holy Spirit within them. Beginning on Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit is available to all believers. God has chosen to give us the gift of His Spirit. To live within us, to help us and to guide us. So even though it's the birthday of the church, we are the invited guests, and we're the ones who are going to leave with the most precious gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit living within us. You see, the disciples, they had gone into hiding after the crucifixion, and they were waiting for God to act, and Jesus had instructed them to stay in the city of Jerusalem until the Spirit came upon them. And now that time has come. The heavens have roared. Fire has burnt. The Spirit of God has filled them. And the disciples preach. And the crowds are amazed. Bishop Will, Will, let me try that again. Bishop William Willimon observed that the first gift of the Spirit, the first gift of the Spirit is the gift of speech. Speech in different languages. And then he observed that the first fruit of the Spirit is proclamation. Think about it. Everyone that was gathered there heard the disciples speaking in their own language. Luke tells us in verse 5, now there, were, now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. He goes on to list all of the different places that the travelers have come from, and I, I realize that a lot of those places are not familiar to us. But if you look at a modern map, I'm going to tell you in today's, on today's map some of the places that these people came from. They came from Iran, Kuwait, Syria, Turkey, Northern Africa, Libya, Italy, Greece, and Saudi Arabia. Several, and I mean several different languages in that time period were spoke by the people who lived in these lands. And the scripture tells us that when they heard this sound, the crowd gathered together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Aren't all of these people who are speaking Galileans? Remember, this is occurring in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the high culture place. It's the home of the elite. It's where all the elite Jews live. Those people that live in Galilee? Well, if you use our terms today, to the people in Jerusalem, those that were living out in Galilee were kind of like, they live out in the sticks. Okay, yeah, they're... Those people are nice enough. They're likable. But they're not quite as sophisticated as we are. 
They have a different dialect. They speak funny. And they have different mannerisms. So this audience is utterly amazed that they're hearing Galileans speaking in their own language. Then we say, then it says, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them, saying they had too much wine. Even in the first century, we had our critics and our doubters. They were mocking the crowd, saying that they're already drunk. And here's where something important takes place. I've never read this in any of my commentaries or Bible studies, but in my mind, I believe that this is the point in history when the Apostle Peter steps up and fully accepts the responsibility that Jesus has bestowed upon him to lead the church and to feed his sheep. And he begins by giving a powerful message. Straight from the reading, it says, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And then Peter goes on to use the prophecies of Joel to explain and interpret the speaking in different tongues that the crowd is hearing. He's going to go on in this message and he's going to proclaim the good news of Christ and he's going to explain the relationship with the coming of the Spirit and the good news of Christ. But as he's talking about Joel, and he finishes his summary from Joel, he says, Everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now at this point, Peter is speaking to a crowd of devout Jews and some of the proselytes. So his message at this moment, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, is addressed to the Jews. But if you read ahead in the book of Acts, just a few more pages, in Acts chapter 10, God is going to open the door of salvation to include the Gentiles as well. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And my friends, how true that statement turned out to be. Before that day was over, 3,000 people called on the Lord and were baptized that day. From 120 or so people, the Christian church grew to over 3,000 in a single day. 3,000 pilgrims from every nation. The majority of those there were foreigners. Pilgrims from other lands who are going to return to their homes forever changed by their Pentecostal baptism. A fellow, a fellow pastor friend of mine wrote, the spark that they carry in their heart will spread the Pentecost fire far and wide. And as I was preparing this message, I couldn't help but be reminded of a time when the chief priests and Pharisees called a special meeting of the Sanhedrin. And from John chapter 11, they asked, what are we accomplishing? Here is this man performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. <clears throat> if we let him go on like this, Everyone will believe in him. <coughs> Excuse me. They tried to silence the message. They tried to silence Jesus and his message. And their utter failure is completed on the day of Pentecost. As the pilgrims depart and they begin spreading the message of the good news back in their homeland. 
and from there on to the rest of the world. That fire continues to spread. One of my commentaries observed that the churches in the United States and Western nations for years sent missionaries to Asia and to Africa. Now Koreans are sending missionaries to the United States. Old denominations wane and new denominations rise to take their place. New converts revitalize old denominations. And it goes on to say that Christians sometimes face great obstacles, but persevere in the faith that whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so as we think about applying today's message to our world today, there's some things we might want to take note of. When Jesus chose those people whom he wanted to be his disciples, they were by far and large what we would consider ordinary people. You don't find religious and political leaders among them. You don't find doctors and lawyers and social elites. You have fishermen, common laborers. You even have Matthew, who's a despised tax collector. My point here is that Jesus chose common and even despised people to be his disciples. One pastor wrote that the first apostles, for the most part, were as ordinary as dirt. And I believe that Jesus likely chose such ordinary citizens to be his apostles so that he could encourage all of us ordinary citizens. These ordinary citizens, these ordinary apostles, changed the world because they were filled with the Holy Spirit God's Spirit in other words they were empowered by God my friends never forget that that same Spirit lives in you we are empowered by the Spirit of God in each of us right now the Spirit is looking for opportunities to bless you. Looking for ways to bless others through you. The central point to all of this is that if we focus on living godly lives, and by that I mean lives of prayers, devotion to God, and helping our fellow man, that the Holy Spirit that we received at our baptism will begin to do wonderful, wonderful things through us. Today, we have gathered or we have come together in this special form to celebrate the birth of the church, the great day of Pentecost. I opened up by describing this as a birthday party. But in many, many ways, it's much more like a graduation party. The Apostles Apprenticeship has now been completed. The promise of receiving the Holy Spirit has been fulfilled. They have received power and authority from on high and are about to embark on the mission to go forth into a world that is not going to welcome them to preach and to teach and to live the love and example of Jesus Christ. The challenge before us today is to find that spirit within us and to use the gifts and the talents that we have been blessed with and use them in service to others. We came to the birthday party to celebrate the birth of the church and to pass out some cupcakes we're leaving with incredible parting gifts. We leave with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit living within us. The power of the Holy Spirit resonates within us. 
And we are called to use that power to help others. I know right now many of you that are hearing the sound of my voice are in desperate need of help. The COVID-19 virus has left unimaginable damage in its wake. Many have died, many are sick, many are out of work, many have great needs. And we've all been given spiritual gifts that we can use to help our fellow man. And in the few days since I wrote those words down, we have other issues. We have violence and bloodshed and looting and rioting and burning in the streets of this nation. We are truly, truly deeply divided. I continue to pray for that spiritual revival. For our people to learn not to repay evil with evil, but to repay evil with love. And to live Christ's example to love one another. To love God first and to love your fellow man as yourself. I continue to make that prayer. And I want you to know that I encourage everyone to pray, to seek the advice and the counsel of the Spirit, to know what it is that God would have you, you, to do. And I have no doubt no doubt at all that you'll be abundantly blessed as you follow the guidance and the paths to which the Spirit will lead you. And I close simply saying, Happy Birthday, Church. Have a blessed week, everyone. And I hope to see you very, very soon. Please accept this prayer as we close. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen.